casual fan thinks of the Frontier Conference, they see it primarily as a Montana-based league. Of course, Carroll, Rocky, Northern, Providence, Western Tech, so many schools with an area code of 406. But some of those programs in the Frontier outside of Montana have found success. Think Lewis Clark State and the women's basketball program. National runners-up a couple years back. When it comes to football, you think of Carroll College and the national championships. Montana Tech has a second-place finish. Rocky's been in the playoffs, Northern a decade back. But what about those schools outside? Why are they making it so difficult for the likes of the Montana schools to be the last team in the league standing in the NAIA's postseason? We take a deeper look with the College of Idaho, Southern and Eastern Oregon. Their head coaches, they don't mind being the forgotten teams. Mike Morosky can't help but feel like a bit of an outsider. Morosky, who was hired to lead the College of Idaho football program when it was reinstated in 2012, is one of three Frontier Conference head football coaches who reside outside the Montana borders. Southern Oregon's Charlie Hall and Tim Camp of Eastern Oregon, the others. It's a great conference. Uh, I do identify it as kind of a Montana conference, but, um, but that's a good thing, I think. It's tough. It's really good football. The newest members of the league, Morosky and the Yotes, are finding their footing in a conference that has typically been dominated by the Montana teams. Most recently, six-time national champion Carroll College and the former national runner-up and 13-time conference champion Montana Tech. After three straight four and seven seasons, COI pieced together its first winning record in 2017, a six and five campaign, with statement wins over Carroll Tech and a sweep against Eastern Oregon. I think Southern has and Eastern have proved their merits, you know, going deep in the playoffs and, and uh, winning the conference or contending for the conference. We're hoping to get there. So as I think everybody is. Since Southern Oregon joined the Frontier Conference in 2012, a Montana team has been the league's final program standing only once in the postseason. Carroll College's semifinal trip to the Cumberlands, Kentucky in 2013. Southern Oregon, meanwhile, was a quarterfinalist in 2012. 2014 saw SOU win the national title and then finished runner-up a season later in 2015. Meanwhile, Eastern Oregon and Southern Oregon added semifinal appearances the past two years respectively. Treasure State teams certainly have the past, but it appears the outsiders own the present. It's such a great league, you know, and that's what it was. It was pretty exciting to be able to see Eastern Oregon in 2016 make it the farthest in the Frontier Conference and then backed up by Coach Hall's team, uh, you know, the Southern Oregon, you know, making it to the semifinals in, in a conference that, uh, you know, people people in the state of Montana think it's driven by all Montana schools. In. But, but at the same time, th these guys are great coaches. They do an awesome job. I've, I've rated this conference for the na nation for um, 10 years, and and it's tough to get two teams in because I promise you our third and fourth place team would go and they would do a really, really good job in, in the first round of the playoffs without a doubt. There's been a, a culture change in Ashland in the last maybe eight years. It's easy to get to the top, it's hard to stay up there. And we're kind of looking at that right now, is just looking at sustainability and how to just become a great program. And it's still, your culture changes every day. So we try to work hard about that and try to find the right guys and put them in the right places. The recruiting process has been vital in the successes in Ashland, LeGrand, and especially Caldwell. For years, Montana teams would land stellar athletes from the Northwest, particularly in Idaho and Washington. But the reemergence of the Yotes, plus the successes of the Oregon schools, have given high school juniors and seniors greater options. It's gotten way more competitive. I mean, Idaho's ten times better recruited this year than it was my first year here. So. And that's a credit to the coaches. I think Carroll's always done well down in Idaho, and, and but Rocky Mountain's done fantastic, and, and uh, that's all part of the deal. You know, recruiting's kind of, kind of nationwide, though we, we wish there was some reciprocity. We haven't gotten many Montana kids yet, but, but we, we hope to someday. And uh, But it's just, there's lots of great opportunities out there for kids. That's what I believe. While Carroll, Montana Tech, Montana Western, MSU Northern, and Rocky battle for the majority of in-state recruits, and College of Idaho and Eastern Oregon keep their roots in the Northwest, Southern Oregon actually has pipelines popping up elsewhere. We don't really interact a lot with the rest of our conference. We see Eastern, you know, once in a while because we're in the state. Um, but, you know, really, we go south. 
um, being right there on the California border, a lot of talent down there, a lot of good quality football in Northern California, five hours away in Sacramento or less. Um, we go into Reno a little bit. We have a great connection with the Hawaiian Islands right now. So, um, you know, one of the strengths of our team is our diversity and just having kids from Hawaii and kids from California and the local kids from Oregon. Um, you know, I think really this makes up the, the athleticism that we have on our team. Finding and connecting with recruits is only half the battle, though, for coaches in the league. Offering a convincing pitch now goes beyond wins, losses, and tradition. Facilities and upgrades are seemingly high on a high school recruit's wish list. In the past few years alone, College of Idaho, Eastern Oregon, Rocky Tech, and Southern Oregon have added artificial surfaces to their fields, while many programs have upgraded weight rooms, locker rooms, and even athletic centers. Every build and renovation is an added bonus for student athletes, but also serves as another chess move in the recruiting game to build the program to success. Again, we're glad to be a part of it, and I think that things are great things are happening, and we're having to address some of those things. Our facilities new in one sense, but you always want to be improving. And it's not so much an arms race like it is in the Pac-12, say, um, but uh, the cost of education is high and, and you want to be able to serve the students as best you can. So I think those things are important to families and that you recruit and, and so I think it, it just is natural. Southern's got new stuff, Eastern's new, you know, it's, it's kind of a, I think it's exciting, you know, and there's, like I said, there's lots of great opportunities out there. Even if it means becoming an outsider. Richie Melby, MTN Sports.